So I ordered a couple of these bands. Um, and I ordered it in red because I have a couple of guns that are in my safe that are ready in case I need them. And I wanted to kind of give myself a reminder that those guns are hot. Yes, you should treat all guns as if they're loaded, but I've got a shitload of guns in that in that safe, and uh, I want an actual like uh, I guess a uh, an indicator that that particular gun is actually uh, has a round chamber. Uh, so I bought these bands, but decided to try and use it on this particular gun. Uh, as an aid in traction because I've always said that these these little squares here or diamonds um, if you tamp down on them they give you a good enough grip but they're not I wouldn't say that they're the best as far as traction is concerned uh, so I decided to try and use this um, as an aid and we'll see if that helps um, it feels a lot better with this on than off uh, with this particular gun I have it on a, a couple of other guns as well um, so we'll see but uh it, it looks promising at the very least this little lip here if I kind of bring it up close here um, gives me a, like a little edge and as I positioned it here it fits between those finger grooves and it's not filling out of place. It actually feels halfway decent here. So <clears throat> this trick is a known trick that people use with rubber bands. Um, I've seen people use these uh, just for grip purposes and I've seen people use these in rubber bands to actuate grip safeties on 1911s for those folks who, who don't like grip safeties but like 1911s and 2011s. So, uh, as you can see here, I want to use my my grip safety, so I have it down a little bit. I could bring it up a bit more if I, uh, you know, if I need to, but uh, I don't want that too close because it does. So this thing does move around a bit, and over time, I can see that it getting in the way and maybe impeding uh, functionality of that grip safety. So we've got it angled down for now. Um, and one other thing is, I've got a new holster here. So I had a little, I guess a little, uh, QR code that came with the Bull Armory. Uh, I guess using it as an advertisement, and not only that, uh, for, for priority holsters, but not only that, um, uh, it gives you a discount. But I, I, I logged in a web, into the website and that, that discount is actually permanent. So I didn't exactly need that QR code to uh, get the discount. Again, I believe it's something like a 10% discount. Um, but I ordered it, it's been Sunday. Um, it is Thursday. Um, and I tried it on and it it's... So the gun fits better in this holster than it does the uh, the tenacor that I have. Uh, now, granted, this one is built around a bull armory, uh, specifically, I believe, the SAS 2. And as you can see here, there is no extra. So it is it is designed for the 3.25 inch barrel. It slides in very well. Has that solid click. I did adjust it. Um, so I believe with the discount, this was like, I'm trying to remember 45 or 50 bucks. Um, but I deviated and actually added the claw since I knew that I was going to carry it, uh, appendix, um, and ordered these clips here. So these are supposed to be similar to the, uh, the metal, what do you call it? The DCC clips. Like what I have on my uh, Tenacore, uh, but these are plastic. Um, they actually cost a good bit. So by the time I finished adding this and these two to the gun, I believe it was like 20, 25 extra bucks. So the, the holster itself, 
all maxed out with all the stuff uh, with all the extra gadgets it was like 70 75 bucks um, wasn't really looking to spend that much on a holster but um you know I guess as far as holsters are concerned you get what you pay for especially if the holster is designed specifically for your gun which this is and I've already tried carrying this um, so remember when I said in my last video where I've been carrying the uh, the S15 since this was in the shop and now <laughs> I'm having an issue trying to swap back because I'm so used to the the the, the, S the S15 uh, specifically the carry portion where it's it's easier to hide because it's uh it's got a thinner grip right well I put this on and tried it and I'm actually able to hide it I mean it tucks in just as not quite as well but almost as well as the S15 does um, you know, if you look at this this uh, grip here and, I, and we've showed this before the grip is a little bit quite a bit thicker than the, uh, the S15 but because of the claw and the, the way this uh, this holster is, and I actually moved it a bit more toward my center line than to the left of, I guess, my one o'clock. Um, and it's actually able to hide the grip pretty well. Um, it tucks in extremely well. So I was actually surprised at how well it tucked in. Uh, so uh, this will... You know, before I was kind of hemming and hawing about trying, you know, switching back to this gun, uh, this holster is going to help me with that. It's going to help me get over that. Um, I want to go back to carrying this gun because I, I want to give it a fair shake, at least give it a full 365 days of carry before I switch, and then kind of give my notes on uh, how well it carried in, during that year. Um, so it was gone to Bull Armory in a month, uh, for a month. And uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've gotten it back. What, a week or two? Um, so um, I, I would tack that on to the, to the, I guess, to my year to kind of make up for that. Uh, my year is coming up, I think, in the end of March or April. Well, I had that, but I didn't start carrying it until probably May or so. So uh, May or June is when my full year of carrying this gun ends and uh you know i'll look through my notes and kind of see but um it's care it's carried well so far i have no complaints about the way it carries the way it shoots or anything uh so it's it's a good gun um whereas before i was trying to put those uh that grip tape on I think I'm gonna leave this alone because it makes me wonder now you know if I did something wrong when I put that grip tape on the where the grip safety wasn't working maybe it got some sticky residue on the side um, it didn't start acting up or I didn't notice it at least until that time period but again it could have been doing that the whole time it could have been doing that you know for that nine or ten months that I had it so but yeah um, uh, I cannot wait to use this use this holster um, I do have an extra set of clips if I need to and then I, I suppose I could order some DC DCC clips because it looks like they they'll fit um, I'm trying to see if I can get away with adjusting so I didn't make any adjustments on this holster uh, it fits, you know, I just put it on and it fits quite well, uh, but it does have retention adjustability. It does have cant adjustability. Um, it does have um, ride height adjustability, I believe. But as far as this is out of the box, it feels like I won't need to make any adjustments. The only thing I did was I tightened the uh, the retention a bit more because I wanted to hear that it wasn't doing that when I uh, when I got the holster. But another thing that they do, and most holster makers do this, they send you the gun 
most of the time it's without Loctite. And there's a reason for that. So I see a lot of people all the time, they, they complain about a particular holster and they say, well, the screws are coming out. It's, it's upon you to actually Loctite those bolts, especially for bolts that require adjustment anyways. So the first thing most people are gonna do is they're gonna adjust those bolts to kinda get that gun tucked in properly based on their own body type. You know, uh, so so why would why would the maker add Loctite to these when more than likely someone that, that buys the holster is going to make adjustments before they start carrying the holster, right? So I'm getting ready to, as soon as uh, I stop the, the recording here, I'm going to tighten up these bolts, which is gonna require me to loosen them again. So I'm probably gonna to have to make some adjustments, uh, but it's necessary to kind of make sure that, uh, I'm trying to look and see how well, because what's gonna happen is, is I'm basically going to have to take apart the gun in order to get those screws out. Well, I can do one at a time, I guess. Yeah. So there's grommets here. There's grommets under here. Um, I'm imagining I would take these screws out and do it here. Um, but I shouldn't have to worry about these grommets. I just make sure I do them one at a time so that the holster doesn't just pop, you know, <laughs> spring free. Um, there's a claw addition here and uh, there's a bolt so we'll uh, lock tight that in place we'll do this now so that we don't have to worry about it later on the last thing I need is for one or two bolts to pop off while I'm carrying uh, that would really suck especially when I could have taken the time to do it and this is the perfect time to do it right so again priority one holsters if you're, you know, I haven't even gave, given this thing a spin yet other than walking around the house with the gun. Uh, so we'll take this. So the plan is to take this gun to the range. Uh, make sure that whatever Bull Armory did to the gun is working. You know, sh shoot a case or two of, uh, not a case, a box or two of ammo through the gun. Um, start getting familiar with it again so that we can begin to carry it um, and once we're ready to carry we'll use this holster and we will document the experience all right bye-bye